disaster. Oh my God! Uh, that big <laughs> they had one brand new house with a kind of shape in the end. You got the drain going off. Today, the drain goes off, wraps his heat ticket. Oh, my God. I took care of it. I did what he took today. I almost asked him. So, 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 so the homeowner had to try it. The homeowner was home Saturday. Oh, Jesus. They should have opened the door in the attic. It looks smoke. So the guy did it on Friday. She found it on Saturday because she was home. This is like three years ago, but it was like you know, ten more minutes. It would have been attic fire, nobody home on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we would have seen it. He'd take off. Well, I figured get the feeling. Well, what, 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 it just failed or did it? No, they put it around the cut and say drain. Yeah, so heat tape stuff. It says use only on water yeah, lines. It's got to stay in there. Stay in there, and you can wrap it with a certain distance of the tape, and you can't overlap. There's a ton of stuff. I, I tell people, figure it out if you want to fill air more. It's just a nightmare. You want to get started? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go with Robert Stewart's award. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking up that for the advisory committee, it's pretty informal. Uh, members can speak informally, not required to obtain the floor before making motions or speaking. Discussion of subject is permitted while no motion is pending. Uh, the chairman, man or men, as it is in this case, can take an active part in discussion and also make motions. Uh, motions do not require a second. There's no limit to the number of times a member may speak on a subject or a motion. Uh, motions to limit or close debate are, are out of order. Uh, when the cons consensus is clear to all members, decisions can be made without either a formal motion or a vote taken. Uh, committee meetings are closed. In this case, we decided to have this meeting open to the public without a public comment. Uh, and that's really about it. So we can get started. And for, for me, I, I think one of the, re the reasons we're here is because of the report that was uh, made to the Board of Selectmen by Ed Dorsett. I'm not sure if everyone's got a copy. Yeah, I think I got, you got a copy. Too? Um, Bob, did you get one? Um, I, I have not seen it. Uh, I mean, I saw the presentation, but I don't have it. On uh, Robert's rules. Since we're not really, it's more for discussion, we're probably not going to make any motions. You can. I mean, make, make a motion to have a meeting. Yeah, so much. Yeah, that's true. Uh, speaking of that, we want to look at the future meetings at this point. Uh, you mentioned Thursdays are generally good for most people. Yeah, um, you bet Mondays are bad for him and Tuesdays are bad for Larry. You said it was good for you. So Wednesday, Thursday? Thursdays. Good. Thursdays, Thursdays are good? Yeah, about 7.30. Can we push it back half hour? Is that too much? Sure. I'm good with it if we have to do it again. Yeah, one, one Thursday is usually not good. Um, the last Thursday, depending on whether there's four or five in the month. It's a scheduling thing. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it should be good. We're thinking two weeks, every three weeks. Well, we might be able to move on. We'll see how we make for progress tonight. As much as we don't have to do, we don't have to do, have to do this all winter. <laughs> well, we're hoping to have it done at least by April. I'm hoping a lot sooner. Uh, I doubt we'll finish it tonight. It would be nice. Uh, well, maybe at the end of the meeting we can take an idea of what will work. Sure. The last Thursday of this month would be the 25th, so that's probably out for you. Okay. All right. Uh, as you all have the report, there were some recommendations in it. Um, what to discuss? Reports the back. Yep. The advisory committee charges. It's the yep. uh, second to last page. And I don't think they have to be taken up in any particular order, but. There's a question of the revenue recovery monies that are being held by the fire department. Uh, the stretcher that was removed from the ambulance. The pickup truck, or you call that the van? Uh, command van, pickup truck, everybody knows you mean. Trailer was dress uniform, storage unit, what's stored in it. Current plan of action is with reference to an October 26 emergency meeting minutes. Uh, long-term agreement regarding disposition of revenue recovery funds, application for PSAR, uh, increasing membership 
in the fire department. Other considerations uh, regarding the bylaws where the newly elected members can't vote during the first six months of the membership. Uh, need an inventory of equipment, record of truck checks, and complete financial statement to advisory committee from the fire department. Uh, I think that was about it as far as the charges. Deadline. Pardon me? The deadline. Or oh, deadline of April. <coughs> Uh, well, anyway, so on the uh, on the first one, there, disposition of approximately 60,000 60, revenue recovery. Um, keep in mind, we had talked about this, and the the project all started with the settlement agreement that was 10 years in, in length. And I think, if I was smart, I brought a copy. I didn't, I didn't bring a whole copy. Um, but if you go on the town firehouse's website, the settlement the settlement agreement is still there. So that was a 10-year agreement between, I think it was May 1st, 2006 to May 1st, 2016. And the money that we're talking about is that 10-year 10 10-year 10 amount. And the attorney's opinion after because we gave back 10 years of it, the, and I know you have a copy of it, but I don't know if you, you did not. Um, it's for, for Bob. Thank you. I think you have one of yours. It's probably out of order. The legal opinion says legal up on top. Yep, I have that. Um, so anyways, that, that particular money that we're talking about, the $60,000, um, you know, our attorney says after your agreement was passed, that's the May 16th, 2016 amount, this still, there's no agreement, so that belongs to the PSA holder. And I had an agreement, I wasn't going to dredge up the past, but I had an, agree, uh, an opinion from our town attorney uh, stating the opposite. All right, and here's my question, because I've been trying to get well, a copy I thought, of that. I thought we were just going to kind of move forward with where we are right now and, you, and move forward. I get that, but you understand the discussion is whose $60,000 is it? We understand who holds it, and I know the fire department has made offers to gift it to the town. In fact, your own attorney made that offer in a letter. And, and rescinded it because it was wrong. Well, anyway, so we're just but trying just to keep move this. forward here. Don't All right, well, we're moving forward. This is our legal opinion from it, and I have yet to see the opinion from the town attorney to that, to the reverse that. But this is, uh, we obviously keep it. It's, that's our attorney's opinion. Yeah. Could I get a, a question in? Yeah. Uh, so the, I, I heard the term settlement agreement mentioned. Yes. Could, could I get a little history on... What was what was the purpose of the settlement agreement? Yes, um, years back, the red pickup truck. The fire department bought the red pickup truck using part of its own money and part of revenue recovery money. Our attorney at the time felt that that was our money also, so we used what we thought was our money to buy the pickup truck. Um, that was pre. 2006. This is, this is before the settlement agreement, correct. So this is a big discussion the town had. And I'm, just give me a second, I'm sure I have it. But here it is, settlement agreement. Um, there's the whole thing, that's just a copy. I might have to refer back I, to it. I, I, I will return it to you. No, I, I, see, I didn't make your complete copies. I only got partial copies in there. But that's just a partial copy. But the, uh, the settlement agreement when we were arguing over this money way back when was we would have a 10-year agreement and the fire department would turn it back over to the town twice a year, January 1st and July 1st. And when we signed the agreement, we had to turn in what was ever in that account and it was uh, $30,000 or something. So over that 10-year period of the settlement agreement, the fire department turned in $540,000 or something, which it was what we worked out in the settlement agreement to move beyond that. So there was a disagreement about how the funds should have been used, and that's that's what um, started the that's discussion what started about the whole thing. Correct. Okay. How are those funds generated? Though? Um, generated by whoever is billing for annual service. Who bills for annual service? Whoever holds the PSA. Oh, that would be Morris Volunteer Fire at the time. Correct. And who gets billed for those services? Generally, the whoever uses the annuals, and it goes 
90, probably 90% 90 of them are through the insurance companies. Occasionally you get somebody who gets billed privately. So basically it's the taxpayers that get billed because they do pay the premiums for insurance coverage that pays for the coverage they receive and pays for the bill. In most cases it's deductible. Right. But it's but their deductible that they're paying. But their insurance company to the insurance, insurance carrier who's turning around turning the money around to you. Correct. Right. Oh, of course so, through Medicare and Medicaid also. Of course. Right. Now you had me, it, there was a clause in this old one here. The parties agree that there will be an annual audit of the revenue recovery account at town expense. Can we can we at least get an audit? Of we that? we actually Did went we through that. I think you still have the copy. King and King went through the audit. It's not an audit. Okay. So it, was, it was a look back. Um, they did a look back. They did three years, and that was the last thing we had done. Actually, right around the time the May first thing, a little after that. Um, I think I have some of that. Uh, give me a second to look for it. I may or may not have made on the printer. So while you're looking back, can I ask Tom a question? Sure. Tom, prior to this disagreement, did the fire department turn over funds to the town periodically or? Twice a year, January and July. It's Even like before this agreement? That's something you have to ask Joel. No, it was an intermittent because there was no, it was something we never thought about and the town never thought about. We would get money and wherever there was money in the account, Someone would say, hey, there's 20 grand in there, let's send it back. So there was no scheduled time for it. Just you know, it might, it might have been the treasurer may have said, we have $11,000, let's send it back. You know, it wasn't, there was no schedule, but it was, I think it was like three years we billed before we, we came up to this project. Was there an obligation to or no? It was just um, something that you guys felt you should do. Well, uh, no obligation to, but keep in mind, around that same time is when we started paying for coverage for the the company to be here, and the amount of money you pay, is, even now, is way more than you're going to generate with ambulance billing. You know, we brought in you know, fifty to sixty thousand a year. The contract last year was one hundred ninety thousand. Yeah, and sometimes so, you don't get paid, right? I mean, even if you bill it, you you can actually go into collections. Generally, we didn't do that because it's our taxpayers that already paid for all their services. Yeah, and so you got it. When, you know, right. if you're a makes sense paid professional group that's in it for money, you. We get that. We I don't think we ever. I think You're not for profit. No, no, no. Right. So the last payment you made was January of 2015. 2016. January 2016. Yeah, I think it was 19 thousand dollars or something. Okay, so really we're talking about February, March, April, and well, April because May 1st was the end date, right? Um, yes, that five month period is well. Okay. Yeah, that's so one of the questions during that period of time, right, January, February, March, April, those four months, mm -hmm. you were st still contractually obligated under this contract? Not necessarily. For one thing, it's not a contract. And if you look under billing, yeah. it says payments are due January 1st and July 1st. It doesn't say at the end of the contract, or I did it, at the end of the settlement, it doesn't say you will pay whatever's left in the fund. Okay, so your standing is that this agreement says that twice a year to turn over the money for the previous six months, but that if this agreement expires, that you no longer have to turn over that six month. Correct. That's that's your standing. Because there's no reasoning okay. in there for I just want to get your, your standing. Now, both of your departments are volunteer, correct? Kent and Washington? Correct. How do you guys handle it? One at a time. Well, we don't do ambulance You don't do ambulance service. service. I, I can't. Can you handle that? We do. How do you handle it? And we bill for it. Bill for it. Yep. And what do you do with the revenue <coughs> you generate from that? Well, it is generated by the fire department right. and kept by the fire department. Kept by the fire department. Um, you we also do not pay staffing. Um, the only agreement we've worked out with the town is to pay for a portion of the paramedic intercept program that they pay for. So anything that's billed for the Medic 4 program, which is the paramedic out of the Milford, that the town pays for the money. We reimburse if we collect that revenue. If so, and only we collect it. So the revenue you collect from running the ambulance goes directly to your department? Correct. Okay. Helps pay for your service. Correct. Okay. Yes. Goes right into our operating budget. Yep. Do you, uh, are you fully funded by the town otherwise? Oh, no. We get a grant from the town. A grant? We're, we're funded independently and we get a, receive a grant from the town. Okay. How's your structure? Are you set up? As an in, as a charity, yes. Yes. 
and do you have any paid staff that aren't? We do not. That are on no, so that's your owner's problem. I want to take that paid staff clerk. There's a title and stuff on there. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. That's coming up. Well, keep yeah. it higher than outside service, but not, not, outside not on staff. staff. But not on, on staff. Correct. Okay. Well, and keep in mind that to further clarify that, since we don't, you, don't want, you don't have to do, dwell too much time on it. Uh, see, the, the money that we're talking about is after May 1st. Okay, so let me get quick into that. Well, what about prior to May 1st? Uh, let, me, let me get to it. Keep in mind, during that five, four month period, we brought in, if I get the right page, we brought in 37425 bucks. Okay. Okay, during that four month period. Okay. That's between January 1st and May 1st, that's when the contract ran out. Okay. And May 26th. Oh, well, whatever, May, whatever, the, whatever the date is. All right. So keep in mind, fast forward, because we there's still a period of time we're going to talk about it now. Fast forward to when the fire department paid for March and April. Okay, we paid for March and April, and there was a discussion whether we were, who was going to pay for it. We paid for March and April. We paid $38,143. So the money that this section was here, that we we're arguing over, if you want to call it that, from January to May, it's $37,000. When we paid for March and April, and then... You might really get yeah, but no, yeah, but... Because this invoice is $23,550, so you're saying $37,000, but this is $23,550. Because remember, we had $190,000 in the capital budget, the capital budget, in the operating budget, for Vintech. That's our paid people. The... Board of Finance transferred 60000 over to contingency. That was what kind of started the rift. So we paid for, which is basically like four months. So we paid for two months out of this when the money ran out. So this money is coming out of this year's budget because this money we just used up as we went through, for lack of a better way of wording. <coughs> the paid daytime coverage didn't run out until we ran out of money around March of 2017. That's when the 190,000 that was 130 ran out. Okay. Would you be open to an accounting or an audit of your accounting for what revenue was driven in? I think actually. And how much it laid out? I think. We don't have all the whole thing. We don't have it goes thing. out 180 days past the billing sometimes. So yeah, and it's hard to close it out. They stopped on May 1st of this past year. And <coughs> it took another eight days from that. But again, that's kind of... Would you be open this, to that accounting? I'd have to talk the body into it. Um, but keep in mind, this was this January to May, my opinion. We took care of that bit. So this is done because this is a wash. The, the money that we're still talking about is after the May when this contract ran out. The contract is not a contract. The agreement, thank you. The agreement, because there was an agreement after that. So there was no agreement. It's just we're doing the billing because we still held the PSA. Joel, in your opinion, was this agreement ever to be renewed? Or was this to just settle whatever disagreements were had with the town and the fire department <coughs> at, in 2006? And once that wrapped up, well, was there was there thought of a new agreement with maybe a different we divvy? Had, we had some discussion on it. Yeah. Um, he wanted to keep it up and clean it like it was, and we wanted to change some things. And pretty much we just couldn't come to an agreement at that point. No, not quite. Uh, we did have one discussion where we sat down, Joel and myself, and stepped around. And some ideas were bounced around. And one of them was actually if uh, the fire, tar fire department would be able to cover perhaps one more shift of the ambulance, that they would keep a percentage of the revenue collected. And I thought the idea had merit. They asked me what my idea was. I said, clean up the old green. Let's keep it the same way. Uh, then we were supposed to get back together and sit down again and discuss it further. And despite multiple attempts over many, many months. They would not sit down and talk. Uh, I asked for their ideas on how they'd want to change the agreement. They were promised, but we never got them. Uh, no, no, so no, when no, we finally got to, to the disagree well, point. So we finally got to a point where 
they just did not want to sit down. They'd rather do it through email. I said, no, that's not a good way to hammer out an agreement. And it just yes. fell apart. But at so that the, point, that's where we start disagreeing anyways. But the fire department is open to some type of, of sharing of these funds. I guess if you weren't, you would have never even entered into those discussions. Well, we can fast forward a little bit, or if you want, we can uh, get towards the end. It might be better to handle it towards the end, because yeah, I, I think that'll probably come up later on. I'm just trying to get my legs under me about you know where some of this particular item might end up. Um, yes, yes is the short answer. Keep in mind, as you look back at history, <coughs> we bought the fire department with its own funds, bought the first ambulance, it was 10,000 bucks. We bought the first Cascade system, it was 13,000 bucks. It's all donated money, but this group and us. Uh, we bought the pickup, which whether that's our money or 50% donation or 50% revenue, we bought that. Uh, we bought the trailer, we bought that with our own money, we're going to get to that. Um, there's things that we bought over the years, when we get a certain amount of money and someone suggests something, we buy it. It's not like it's somewhere else, it's fire department use. So I think you're probably the, the intent of to being talked into give it back is actually very realistic. So you're open to talk yeah. about giving it back? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're open to talk about you. Okay. Um, I have a bit more simplistic view of the money. Uh, <clears throat> I feel it's money that should be there to help offset the cost of the end of service in the town. It gets, the taxpayers are paying taxes to have the service, and then they're paying again when they get billed for the service. So just my view that that money, they're kind of getting double taxed, why not bring that revenue back to the town to help offset the MS service, the cost of the MS service. <coughs> That's fairly plain and simple. I don't believe, though, that they're paying twice. Isn't the insurance company paying? Who pays for insurance? It all depends on how you want to word it. Generally speaking, Right, on most private plans for health insurance, that there is an ambulance deductible, right? And that deductible is a thousand plus in right. some cases. So, in terms of the insurance company paying, the insurance company is an intermediary. Right. Patient pays the insurance company. The insurance pays the billing company when for that the, service. When this, when this money you, you you refer to it is giving back to the town, where does that go when it goes back to the town? Well. The original SURS agreement that we have in here said the town was supposed to keep an exact accounting of it. It, it goes into the general funds, basically where it goes. Um, so it's used for virtually for anything. anything. Generally, it's thought that it helps offset the cost of the paid service that was in town. Which it's never going to catch up with anyway, so it's, right. just, it's just how right. it is. Right. Can, can we talk about the service for a bit? So, when the ambulance was responding out of Morris, Vintec was staffed 12 hours a day, five days a week? You, usually seven, but it depends on when it was. If someone was going to be around for summer, then we could take, if we gave Vintec two weeks notice, they could change the shift. But generally, it was either five or seven. Okay, five or seven days, but the overnight shifts were never covered by Vintec. Those were always, they were always covered by correct. volunteers. Okay. <clears throat> Is your department 24-7 now? 24-7 what? In terms of ambulance coverage? Volunteers. Yes. 24-7. Yep. yep. So, I, revenue is being collected whether the ambulance is staffed or not. Staffed with volunteers or staffed with the career Correct. crew. Um, so the, the billing is collected on all those calls. Correct. So there's 12 hours a day, possibly five to seven days a week that is being done by volunteers that that money, I understand that the, the, the billing costs more than the revenue received by billing, but how many, how many ambulance calls a year does Morris normally work? About 200? 112, 115. To that's able. total calls or the ones that, that the volunteers respond to? That's I believe that was uh, mutual aid. Too. So it's total calls, yeah. Enough to be a loss. Yeah, this town is very hard. You would never, 
have to generate a lot of calls to, to, to make up for it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a ton. Of, Litchfield, where they have 1,200 calls a year, well, they're, yeah, they're starting to be at the break-even point. It's, it's, if you're going to bill and pay somebody to stand by, it's always going to be a loss. But if you want to have the ambulance go, then you got to either flip a coin or you pay somebody to be here. And we, we talked about this years and years ago, obviously. Who does the administrative work involved in billing? Um, the billing is done by Holdsworth Associates, and they do most of the towns around. Um, any of the other scheduling we would take care of, uh, supplies. Who's, who's the, the fire department, sorry. Um, the fire department, fire department would take care of supplies. Uh, any maintenance, ordering, repairs, that type of thing. We obviously have a budget for all that. But so there's nobody in town offices no. that handle any of this? No, that's correct. It's all done within the morals right. part. But there's a paid clerk uh, on town payroll at the fire department. So there's a... But she, typically, she would only order whatever the EMS coordinator gave her, uh, order me three boxes of gloves and six trauma dressings, whatever, to make up a thing. She would order it. So, the estimated revenue for billing seventy thousand dollars a year is that? Uh, generally possible? between fifty and sixty. The average over ten years, I think. I, had, I came up with sixty-six. It could be less. 60. Yeah, I, I think we gave back that that period was five hundred forty thousand dollars. And again, it's it's fluff at this point. Over ten years. Well, I mean, the big issue, right, is even if we like get to an agreement on everything tonight, right? Can we staff an ambulance? I would say probably not, because there's just not enough volunteers in town. Um, one of Ed Dorsett's big points in here was uh, there's not enough volunteers. So it's one of those things the town has to address. It's not just a group of volunteers. And we're getting way ahead of ourselves, obviously, but that's something the town has to decide. Well, so one of our charges is to get an application for primary service responder back, right? And we also have another charge here for aggressive recruitment and membership, right? And I think we're kind of putting the chicken before the egg on that one. Yeah, yeah a little bit. We have to maybe get the membership, and then we can talk about that PSAR. But, I mean, as of right now, you have just stated yourself, even if we got to this tonight, there's no way we could put that ambulance back on the road because we just don't have the staff to, fit to manage that. Is that correct? Well, and, yeah, and the other side of that is I'm not going to stress one volunteer after this particular fiasco we went through. So... For example, I was the EMT on Wednesday night, and I drove on Friday night. It, it sounds like a lot. You, know, you might not have a call for a month Friday, so it's, it's not a lot of stress, but I still got a plan on being around two nights a week. So if there's one volunteer who's on Tuesday and Thursday, uh, you're not required to be around Tuesday and Thursday. It's a volunteer shift. you got a life. So that's the, that's the kind of the rough and negative view of it. So my, my contention is maybe we pull this off the list. Well, we can put a line through it, or at least put it farther down the road. Like I said, it's one of those things you have to actually increase your membership. The town's got to get behind it and work on it. And there's, there's no negativity to that. I mean, it's just how it is. There is an but option here. It would be realistic about what, what we're trying to do. There is an option here, though, too. Uh, remember, a PSA is not only it's for basic life support. You can do any variety of stuff. Or first responder, R1. The town, the fire department, could work towards getting the R1 back in town to have a first responder service here with the volunteers. And still call any ambulance from another town. Correct. That's one thing I think we should work for. Well, that's kind of phase one to what you would try to get back to. Is there any interest in the fire department's part of trying to get the R1 status back for the fire department? We'd have to talk her into it. And you're already you, you already have qualified people to be able to do that, correct? Correct. Um, we have no first responder stuff and no medical stuff and all that, but it's mm. a separate issue. Yep. Well, you have the first responder bags. Yeah, those those are on the list. <coughs> What's the next level, Tom, of the PSA? Well, then they'd go for uh, the ambulance service itself. Yeah. Providing the ambulance. If you you can do first responder, you can do the ambulance service, which is BLS, and it's uh, EMR and EMT, or you can do ALS, which is an EMT and EMTI, and then you can do paramedic service, which is you know, you're definitely working for a paid professional group because you're you've got the training and, and you're you're next thing below a nurse. You really it's really a job at that point. Yeah. 
So um, you would have plenty of uh, staff for first responder then? We, uh, we did the EMTI for one point and we stepped back from it because it was just too much. You know, I did 20 sticks a year and you know, the amount of calls we had where you, we had to do it because when you can call a paramedic, they can do anything they want. So whereas we, there was no point for us to stay that high in the volunteer level. How many uh, EMR EMTs do you think you have in the fire department? Uh, I think we had five or seven and we got a bunch of EMRs too. Do you have a roster? I do, but I don't have one many. But it's one of those things where you know we got to be talked into that. Why do you have to be talked into it? Um, well, you know we've been abused a lot by the current administration, and I don't really want to get talked into it at this point. Um, but I would suggest going on to the next thing. Um, Why can't we settle the first thing? Well, the PSA thing, I and mean, we can certainly pursue first response. Well, it just seems like there's, you know, an obligation to try to cooperate here. Mm -hmm. And we can pursue that, and again, I still have to sell the body on it. <clears throat> well, they do have training, and they, I would think they want to perform their duties. Mm. Well, look at this. What else? Um, let's talk about what more we can whack out tonight, right? So maybe we start with the uh, the stretcher. Yeah. Well, keep in mind here's I, I got the receipts. This is one of those things where that was bought by the fire department. Kind of with what monies? Uh, fire department funds. How were those generated? They're fire department funds. They're yeah, money that's I'm, donated well, to I'm us. I'm getting too told. I donated at Giovanni's oh. course of stretching right, myself, right. as did many people in the And I donated for that cause for a reason. Right. For and that stretcher to be used, I mean, to be used in the ambulance for more people. And uh, we bought it for ourselves, for our use. And that was what the intent was. Does it make sense for a stretcher to be an ambulance? Um, correct. But it's the fire department incorporated property. And we took it out. So when you say the fire department incorporated, it's a 501c. So. 501c3, correct. So you're saying you're unwilling to return that stretcher to use in the... Uh, Ambulance that oh, primarily serves Morris? I'm expressing that it's our, our stretcher and that we own it. Correct. Correct. Well, getting back to what I'm saying here is would you allow it to come back into use in the ambulance it, currently? And I'd have to talk about it into it. 